Hello, everyone. Welcome to the University of Michigan Center for Japanese Studies lecture series. My name is Yuki Shiraido, Assistant Professor of Political Science, and I am the host today. Before introducing today's speaker, let me make some announcements from the center. Next week, uh, please join us uh, Thursday noon lecture with uh, Ralph A. Uh, Infrosado, uh, Chief Executive Director, Jetro Chicago, speaking on Japan's, uh, Japan's US investment dynamic, a new look at the US-Japan economic relationship. For this event and future programs scheduled in this lecture series, please check out our CJS event page at the uh, University of Michigan website or various social media like Twitter, Facebook, and the likes. Now, I am very glad and excited to introduce today's speaker, Professor Charles McQueen. Professor McLean is this year's Toyota Visiting Professor in our center. He received his PhD in political science from the University of California, San Diego in 2020. And he was a postdoctoral fellow in the program on US-Japan relations at Harvard University prior to joining our center. He studies comparative politics, uh, politics with a focus on political institutions, elite behavior, and Japan in particular, the impact of its aging populations on politics. And his work has been published in Comparative Political Studies, Nature Medicine, and Political Psychology. All of them are very good uh, academic journals. Today, he is going to discuss voter evaluations uh, uh, of uh, the age of political candidates in Japan. In this webinar, attendee webcams and microphones have been muted, but we invite you to use the Q&A function, not the chat function, to submit any questions you have. You can submit your questions anytime. And in fact, uh, Charlie uh, is, uh, is happy to take clarifying questions during his talk. And so if you submit such a question on the, in the Q&A function, I will, uh, I will ask that question on behalf. Uh, and after, uh, Professor McLean's presentation. I will ask other. I will ask him other uh, other questions as time permits. With all that, uh, please join me welcoming Professor McLean. Charlie, uh, screen is yours. Great, thank you so much, Yuki. Very happy to be here. Let me just share my screen. Okay, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be giving this talk at CJS today um, via this webinar. So in many countries, politicians are often much older than the average constituent. So for example, we could think back to the previous US presidential election where Joe Biden and Donald Trump, both in their 70s, were the oldest candidates in US history with Biden going on to become the oldest president. Japan also had a leadership transition last fall, where Yoshihide Suga, who was in his 70s, stepped down to eventually be succeeded by Fumio Kishida, who's a bit younger, though still in his 60s. For many of us here today who study Japan, live in the US, this type of gerontocracy or seeing much older politicians seems pretty normal. And it is true that young people are underrepresented everywhere, but they're especially underrepresented in the United States and Japan. So here, what I am showing you is all of the OECD countries with the Y axis being the percent of their members of the lower or unicameral house of parliament that are under 40 years old. So we see here that Japan ranks second to last with just 
of members under 40. In the US, it's just a bit better at 8% of members under 40. I actually just updated this figure for this most recent um, October 31st election in Japan, which had the lowest number of younger candidates under 40 and lowest number of younger MPs elected in 30 years, since sort of the late 80s, early 90s. And it's been on a steep decline really since the sort of turnover between DPJ and LDP. We might be concerned about the low number of young people in public office in Japan and the US for a number of reasons, perhaps because of normative concerns about equity between generations or concerns that not having many young people in public office could affect youth turnout. Uh, in my own work, I'm particularly interested in whether the absence, relative absence or shortage of younger politicians also has policy consequences, that issues particularly important to young people such as education, childcare, might receive less attention by parliaments that have much older politicians. And if we look at sort of cross-national just correlations, there does seem to be a pattern in line with this expectation. Now what I'm showing you is what percent of the MPs are under 40 on the x-axis. And the y-axis is the percent of GDP that that uh, country spends on family benefits, on child welfare, judo fukushi, right? And so we see here to Japan and the US on the bottom left of the scale, spending much less on families than other countries that tend to have much younger people in government. So in my larger book project, I'm really interested in two big questions. So the first is why are younger politicians so rare in some contexts and not others? And the second is, does it matter? Should we be concerned? Does this underrepresentation of young people in public office matter for social policy, for policy outcomes, for welfare spending? I had a chance in the fall to talk at a different CJS event co-sponsored with the Wiser Center here at Michigan. And in that talk, I really focus on the second question. I talked about how in my book, I collect new data on municipal candidates, mayoral candidates, municipal assembly members. And I showed how when a municipality in Japan elects a younger person to be mayor, they tend to greatly increase the amount of money that they invest in child welfare, especially tackling issues like long waiting lists for public daycare, taikijido, those types of things. And so, so that was really focused on the second question. Today, I'm gonna to focus a bit more, at least on part of the first question, on trying to understand, you know, why don't we see more young politicians in Japan? So to give an overview of what I wanna talk about today, and this is work that I've done uh, together this particular part is work I've done together with Yoshikuni Ono, uh, a Michigan grad who's at Waseda University. So our young people, um, and we we're interested, are young people underrepresented in particular because maybe voters just view some politicians or some candidates as too young to run. Some young, pe young people, too young, not qualified, not enough experience, not competent enough to serve in public office. And we wanna understand, is that true? And if so, or if not, why? To do so, we're gonna introduce this novel experiment we came up with using age regression and progression software to manipulate the faces of hypothetical mayoral candidates to make them look younger or older and see how voters respond. To give you a preview of where I'm going, we actually find that voters are pretty happy, pretty equally favorable toward both younger and middle-aged candidates. So there's no voter dislike among Japanese voters of any age toward younger candidates but there's a shared dislike of candidates beyond a certain age. There's a clear dislike of much older candidates, no dislike, no real bias toward younger candidates overall. And then we also find that even though voters say younger candidates have less favorable traits, they may be a little bit less competent or less experienced, they still think that they're much more likely to focus on a set of policy issues like education, childcare, and climate change, we'll talk about that in a minute. And so overall, we think that this can contribute to our understanding of more broadly of youth representation, of inequalities between generations, and then specifically, which I'll talk about today, um, Japanese politics. So in political science, to the extent, it's pretty recent, but to the extent there's been work trying to explain why don't we see more young people running for office, they tended to approach the question from what we call sort of the supply side, thinking about things like the lack of political ambition. So for example, maybe young people are just not interested in running for public office. They may have less interest or knowledge about politics, or they may dislike certain aspects. Um, work, work has found that they dislike certain aspects such as having their life be very public, um, or they view politicians as corrupt, all sorts of issues that might lower political ambition among young people. Other work has thought about restrictive political institutions. So high minimum age requirements to run for office or electoral systems that require candidates to accumulate high name recognition 
uh, significant financial resources, local ties, all of these resources are ones that individuals tend to accrue with age, making it difficult for a young person to gain office. Today, um, Yoshi and I are interested in, in the demand side of the story and the voter side of the story. Do voters actually like older candidates, more experienced candidates over younger ones? Why or why not? So when we started this, we came up with two reasons that could explain the shortage of younger politicians, two ways that age biases might have this effect. One is that maybe there's a youth discrimination an overall shared belief among the Japanese electorate that younger people under 40, for example, are just not ready to serve in as important an office as um, a mayor's office or in the, in the lower house. There's sort of mixed evidence from conjoint analyses. Conjoint analyses, I, I mentioned earlier that we're gonna do this face manipulation software, uh, which is new, but prior experiments have used text and varied all sorts of different elements of ca uh, candidates to see how voters respond. And there's sort of, depending on the setting and other variables included, there's sort of mixed evidence for whether there are age biases in general, but the strongest patterns have been that voters tend to like experience, but they also do not like candidates at least past a certain age. So our, but our first expectation is that we're thinking that maybe you know, younger candidate voters are gonna be less likely to say that they're gonna vote for younger candidates than older candidates. Is there any evidence in the Japanese electorate at least of sort of a bias against younger candidates? A second possibility could be in-group favoritism. And the way this would function is basically through voter turnout. So the idea would be that maybe um, voters just like candidates who are closer to their own age. Younger voters like young candidates, middle-aged voters like middle-aged candidates, older voters like older candidates. But the problem is that because young people turn out to vote at such lower rates, that's really what's dooming younger candidates. People have studied sort of in-group favoritism related to age in observational work, but they haven't looked at it in terms of trying to explain the shortage of younger politicians. And to the extent they found evidence in observational studies, they have found some, but it's been relatively weak evidence. But our expectation is that we're, we're trying to see if, do we see if voters seem to prefer candidates closer to their own age? And is there any evidence that this could be what's sort of holding younger candidates back? The second part of our experiment is gonna be focused much more on the mechanisms behind the age biases that we find. So we think that maybe voters, when they see candidates of different ages, they act on stereotypes to infer certain characteristics about how those candidates would likely behave in office. So we talked about, we talk about in this paper, three types of age stereotypes. So one is policy issues. So maybe, um, and this in particular could relate to sort of the in-group favoritism I talked about before, but maybe for example, younger can, young uh, voters think that younger candidates are gonna focus, especially on issues important to young people like education and childcare. And older voters think that older candidates will be the best suited to tackle elderly welfare. And so this could be part of the, um, what's driving the in-group favoritism. But stated simply, we wanna see if voters expect candidates to focus more on issues that are important to similarly age voters. So do younger candidates focus on youth issues, older candidates on elderly issues? These are just, again, expectations of voters. The second is traits. So I mentioned earlier that one thing that could be holding back younger candidates is maybe Japanese voters think that young people lack the traits or qualities that would make them either great candidates or effective representatives in office. So our expectation here is that maybe voters are gonna expect younger candidates to have less favorable traits on average than older candidates. And our last one is electability. Um, sometimes in political science, we talk about sort of strategic versus sincere voting. But here our thought is that maybe voters like younger candidates, like their true belief is that they like younger candidates, but they just don't think the younger candidate has a good chance of winning. So what we're trying to pick up here is do voters think that younger candidates, apart from whether they would vote for them, do they think younger candidates are just less likely to be able to win an election? So we'll talk about that as well. So to tackle these issues, uh, we think that Japanese mayoral elections, so we're gonna focus particularly on mayor's offices in Japan, uh, offer an ideal setting to test these hypotheses for three main reasons. The first is just the salience of age-related policies in a rapidly aging society. Right? We, many of us probably know that Japan is the world's oldest country uh, aging at a rapid rate. Social welfare costs, for example, related to aging are already the largest part of the budget and expected to increase by about 20% uh, over the next 20 years, at the same time that the population is set to shrink by 20%. And so all sorts of issues related to age, education, childcare, but also on the other side, uh, related to elderly welfare and healthcare are going to become a, these crunch issues. And while we tend to talk about it often at the national level, 
the reason we like focusing on mayors is that they have real discretion over policy. So most studies and conjoints that have sort of touched on age look at legislatures, but the challenge is that if a younger person sort of enters the legislature, they're not really likely to have as much influence as an older person. They might, you know, they're probably going to be a backbencher. They won't read most legislation in Japan comes from the cabinet. So they're not really going to have a, a pol you know, policy influence. So we focus on mayors because we're trying to capture a setting where voters might expect both younger and older candidates to have at least relatively similar capabilities to influence policy. And that's one reason why we chose mayors. Another reason is that young people are just very underrepresented in mayor's offices. So here is work from other parts of my dissertation and it's a density plot where the dark gray, the x-axis is the age of a uh, mayor at the time of election in dark gray versus the general distribution of the population in light gray. And so we see that while the Japanese population is pretty evenly distributed across various ages, Japanese mayors, the average mayor enters their, begins their term at age 62. And it's really sharply peaked. So there's very, very few mayors in Japan who are under 50. 90% of mayors are 50 or older, 95% are 40 or older, 98% are 30 or older. And so we have lots and lots of mayors who enter office actually around 65, that's the most common or like modal outcome. And so we're curious um, that the, you know, the electorate seems to be electing people who are either older or middle-aged and really don't elect younger mayors. And so that's one reason why we picked it as well. And then the last reason is that for those of us who are familiar with Japanese campaigns, um, they're very personalistic campaigns. And so we're gonna be doing this face manipulation experiment. So we wanted a setting where voters are used to seeing faces. And so we thought immediately of these, you know, senkyo posta, these election posters, uh, and how they prominently feature the faces of candidates. Also, Japanese mayoral elections in general have significantly less party influence than national level elections. 98% of candidates run for as independents in Japanese mayoral elections. So we're also happy because there's sort of less party influence focused more on sort of other types of characteristics like age that differ between candidates. So in this setting, we did two uh, experiments in March, 2020, the same month, conducted by Rakuten Insight, a major um, survey firm in Japan, and the Research Institute of Economy, Trade and Industry, who in turn actually used Rakuten Insight. So the survey samples about 3000 respondents each, um, different groups, nobody did both survey. And both match the census in terms of respondent age, sex, and region of residence. So trying to get a somewhat representative sample. The two experiments, the first one's going to tackle that sort of age bias, the youth discrimination and in-group favoritism. And the second one is going to think more about stereotypes. So the interesting or unique thing that we did in this experiment is that while most work describes age using text, we thought that we would do it in a visual way. So we uh, purchased the photos of two different Japanese models that we thought looked like typical candidates. Uh, one is even raising a fist in the sort of common uh, symbol of can the candidates of all the ages used in elections. And then we use this face app software to basically manipulate those photos to look either younger or older. The software is, creates quite high resolution photos. And the nice thing is that it only changes those elements of photos that are thought to sort of change with age. Things like hair color changing, skin pigmentation changing, um, skin elasticity changing, but it doesn't change other aspects of the photo um, or sort of the underlying facial structure of the candidate. So we wanted to see kind of like the posters, uh, what voters would think when they saw candidates of different ages. Our experiment has sort of pros and cons relative to using text, sort of more common conjoint experiments. So one thing is that we're not going to be able to vary a lot of other characteristics or control for a lot of other characteristics. Um, ours is more akin to sort of the first impression voters might feel when they see an election poster or when they see a candidate running. On the flip side, lots of voters go to the ballot box without a huge detailed list of information um, in making their decisions. So we think that this is also an important sort of addition to understanding um, how voters view you know, uh, different characteristics before other types of characteristics might you know, uh, uh, affect it as well. So in the first experiment, what we basically do is we randomly select one version of candidate one and one version of candidate two, right? So we tried to pick candidates here that are sort of in their voters thought that the younger candidate here was in their 30s, the middle-aged candidate in their 50s, and the older candidate in sort of their late 70s. And, and so we randomly picked these and put them together. And we asked them, asked uh, respondents in our survey, survey one, 
So suppose the following two people are running for mayor and competing in an election in the municipality where you reside. Both candidates are newcomers and independents. If you were to vote in this election, which candidate would you vote for? As I mentioned earlier, 98% of mayoral candidates are independents, so this is normal. We just specified that they're both newcomers because we didn't want the respondents to infer that the older candidate was much more likely to be an incumbent, and thus that would sort of bias all of their responses. So showing the main result to experiment one, we're going to show our results in these so-called coefficient plots, or sometimes called airplane plots. On the x-axis here, um, we're looking at the percentage point change and the probability the respondent said they would vote for the candidate. And the middle-aged candidate is always going to be the baseline condition we're comparing it against. And looking at sort of younger candidates versus middle-aged candidates and older candidates versus middle-aged candidates. Older, the image in their 70s, younger, the image in their 30s, comparing against this baseline of candidates who looked like they were in their 50s. So we found, like I said earlier, that voters really view younger and middle-aged candidates as about the same. Even if we controlled for how likely, you know, likely voters, people who tend to turn out in elections or other types of characteristics, uh, we find that voters on average were about the same, a little bit more likely to say that they would choose the younger looking photo than the middle-aged, but it, it wasn't statistically significant. By comparison, voters really, and this is gonna be a common theme today, um, really panned elderly looking candidates. So in our experiment, we found a very large initial effect of sort of 50 percentage points less likely to choose the older candidate. This is very strong. I'm happy to talk more about it in the Q&A, but actually even text descriptions have found effects on the size of 25 to 30 percentage points, even when controlling for a whole list of other factors. So this doesn't seem too ridiculous comparing, considering that we don't have sort of other characteristics, but it is a really large effect. So happy to talk more again during the Q&A. We next looked, so here it didn't really seem again like youth discrimination um, was a factor. We thought that maybe voters would view some candidates as too young to run, it didn't really turn out that way. The second thing is that we broke down the responses to see sort of in-group favoritism. So here is just one rough cut where we ran, you know, we uh, distributed voters into three groups. We set younger voters at sort of 18 to 44, middle-aged voters at 45 to 64, and older voters 65 and over. Uh, these trends are very similar regardless of sort of where we slice it into three groups. It's just for visual purposes, we've kind of used um, these three groups. So what we found was that younger and middle-aged voters do show um, some in-group favoritism and younger voters in particular. So if we look at the left side here, we see younger voters are much more likely to choose the younger candidate. Again, just to reiterate for those unfamiliar with airplane plots, um, if you see it sort of the, the estimate and the little 95% um, confidence interval, which is the line to the right of the zero line. It, on, so on the left-hand side here, it means that younger voters were more likely to choose younger candidates versus the baseline of middle-aged candidates. And then to the left of the zero line, it shows that younger voters were much less likely to choose older candidates relative to that baseline of middle-aged candidates. Again, just wanted to reiterate to hopefully uh, make things clear. So we see younger voters more likely to choose younger candidates, disliking older candidates. Middle-aged voters like middle-aged candidates a lot more than elderly candidates, but they actually were indifferent or, or about chose younger and middle-aged candidates about the same. And older voters too were actually no more positive toward older candidates. This is gonna show up in experiment two as well, uh, if we have time, but really we didn't find that older, older voters actually don't like older candidates more. If anything, they like them less than other age groups. So pausing for a minute to sort of think about some initial takeaways from experiment one, we didn't really find evidence of strong biases against younger candidates. In our experiment, initial, at least in the second experiment as well, voters in Japan seemed pretty willing and pretty happy to support more young candidates, more young people running for public office. It also showed that voter preferences appeared to differ substantially from the actual observed age demographics of Japanese mayors. So if you think back to that density plot that I showed you earlier, actual mayors in Japan are, tend to be on the older side of middle age to the earlier side of elderly, right? A lot of mayors in their 60s and 70s, almost no mayors in their 30s. So it's very different, whereas in our um, results, we found that voters were sort of equally happy between middle-aged and younger, younger candidates, even though they see so few younger candidates, see so few young mayors. The in-group favoritism we found was actually contrary again to what we believed, it was strongest for younger voters. They were the ones who like were most positive toward candidates from their own age group, which suggests that perhaps if more young people turned out to vote, 
we might see more young candidates or young candidates might perform better. Um, so again, contrary, it wasn't a negative effect that seemed to be holding younger candidates back, except for that if more young people turned out, um, they may fare a bit better in elections. So turning to experiment two, the key difference between experiment two and experiment one is that in experiment one, we showed two randomly selected photos back to back. And in experiment two, we're just showing one. So we show one of those six photos uh, from the table I showed you earlier. And we ask all sorts of questions about what these people believe um, the candidate might behave like in office. So as an example, this is just one of those six photos. Uh, we asked voters, suppose uh, respondents, suppose this person were to run for mayor, how likely do you think they would be to focus on each of the following policies? And then we ask again, sort of like, how likely do you think they would be to focus on a set of, I mean, how likely do you think they would be to have the following traits? Or how likely do you think they would be to win an election? We chose a set of policies and traits uh, based on sort of both prior studies that have looked at candidate evaluations more generally, and then also thinking about certain policies and traits that are directly related to age. So we ask about education, which tends to affect younger people more, healthcare, which affects the elderly more. Um, I'm gonna show you the whole set of issues on the next slide. For traits, we asked about experience um, and also sort of their orientation toward the longer term, toward the future, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute. So I'm gonna take some time to go through the results for experiment two. So the first one on policy issues, we asked about, uh, I think it was 11 different policy issues in general, in total, and we found significant differences between age groups. Now the figure here is small and hard to see, so I'm gonna go through it sort of step by step, but just the overall punchline we found is that voters see a clear link between the candidate's age, um, the, you use that age to sort of infer the types of policies that candidate would likely um, follow if elected in office. So let's just zoom in on the issues that were most associated with younger voters so that I can kind of explain the figure. So again, using airplane or coefficient plots here, the difference is middle-aged candidates still the baseline. The darker color is comparing the younger candidate to the baseline of middle-aged candidate. The light gray is comparing the elderly candidate to the middle-aged candidate. And so here, these are youth issues because the dark lines are all to the right of the zero line, meaning our respondents thought younger candidates would focus on these much more than middle-aged candidates. You see that it also turns out that for these issues, elderly candidates were thought to focus much less on them than middle-aged candidates. So we found that voters associated five issues related to social policies that disproportionately affect young people and more progressive policies with younger candidates. So these five policies were the you know, youth-oriented welfare, so education policies and childcare, they thought that there were 10 percentage points or 15 percentage points more likely to emphasize these issues if they were elected in office. Voters also associated um, progressive issues like environment and climate change. They associated anti-corruption policies, and then also policies related to do with foreign residents and multiculturalism, thought younger candidates would be much more likely to focus on these issues. For middle-aged candidates, the issues that were associated interestingly had to do with sort of the economy and public safety. So here we can see these are middle-aged issues because both younger candidates and older candidates are to the left of the zero line. Voters thought the baseline was, you know, the baseline candidate, the middle-aged candidate was significantly more likely to focus on these issues. So middle-aged candidates most associated with the economy and employment, public works, um, addressing the budget deficit, and then also tackling crime and safety. On the economic issues, we thought that perhaps this had to do with voters thinking that middle-aged candidates present sort of like a Goldilocks scenario. They're more experienced with dealing with the economy than younger candidates, but still active participants in the labor force compared to elderly candidates. And so maybe there's sort of a sweet spot where they're expecting that middle-aged candidates have this, you know, care more and they have this experience or they're gonna focus especially on economic issues. And lastly, we find that elderly candidates are associated, especially with social policies that disproportionately affect older people. So older candidates were thought to focus, um, therefore they were basically the least likely to focus on policy issues overall or on other policy issues, but most likely to focus on elderly care and healthcare. So this did seem to sort of support our expectations for hypothesis three, that voters do seem to associate certain types of issues with candidates of different ages um, that match the types of policies that we know that voters um, of similar ages seem to care about. So this could, again, um, interesting to think about how this might be fueling their opinions for candidates. Um, on traits, 
uh, we did find support that voters did seem to view younger candidates as having less favorable traits than middle-aged candidates on average, but they didn't actually view them as having significantly worse traits or bringing worse traits to office than older candidates. It was just different types of traits. So younger candidates were viewed as like less reliable, determined, competent, or consensus-oriented than middle-aged candidates, but they were also viewed as more competent um, or determined than older candidates. So a bit of a mix. Um, one thing I just wanted to focus on here that we thought was really interesting was we talked about sort of political experience versus what we called long-term oriented or the extent to which the voters thought the candidate would focus on long-term policies like investment or focus on the future. Uh, and so we found, you know, what we might expect this sort of that voters might see this trade-off between electing an older candidate with more experience um, versus a younger candidate with a longer time horizon, someone more able to, able to stay in office longer, uh, focus on longer term issues. So if we look at political experience, for example, older candidates, elderly candidates were viewed as the most experienced, even though they were very disliked by voters, right? So again, past a certain age, experience doesn't seem to be valued as much. Um, and we see that they were viewed as much less likely by comparison to sort of focus on the longer term. So, uh, and then lastly, we talked about um, electability. So here we found that respondents did view younger candidates as less electable, less likely to win an election than middle-aged candidates, but more electable than older candidates. So this is sort of interesting compared to what we found in the first experiment, because in the first experiment, we showed that voters in Japan are happy, equally willing to support younger and middle-aged candidates, but then they think those younger candidates are less likely to win, right? So this could also explain some, some lack of support that maybe there's a perception that even if they like younger candidates personally, there may be a concern that the younger candidate's not going to win an election or not as likely to get the support or financial resources or whatever it is to actually capture that office. So to summarize some points um, from this, the second experiment, we found that kind of in, although it was sort of mixed in line with our theoretical expectations, we did find that voters draw clear links. They seem to infer that candidates of different ages are likely to emphasize different policy issues in office. They're likely to bring different types of traits into office. And they use the candidate's age to infer how likely they thought the candidate was to win or lose an election. We think that even though younger candidates and middle-aged candidates are sort of equally liked, there appear to be sort of different mechanisms going on. So younger candidates were seen as much less experienced, less competent, and less electable than middle-aged candidates, but also much more likely to focus on many policy issues and have this potential to focus on these policy issues over a longer time period. And then finally, um, older candidates really panned throughout our analyses. So older candidates are seen as the least competent, least likely to focus on most policy issues, and least electable. And as I mentioned earlier, um, great work by you know, Yusaku Horiuchi, Dan Smith, uh, Eshima and others have found that Japanese voters really, you know, in text as well, dislike elderly candidates. And so we see here present, providing some of the sort of mechanisms for why they dislike elderly candidates has to do with perhaps viewing them as much less likely to focus on certain policy issues, bringing less favorable traits into office, much less likely to win elections. Um, so we're trying to also, again, contribute the sort of mechanisms to the story. Now, I don't have time to talk about today because I want to leave plenty of time um, for a discussion, but also in the paper, we broke down the sort of second experiment by the age of the voter. And I just want to summarize very quickly what we found. So interestingly, we find that voters of different ages generally agree about the policy issues, traits, and electability of different candidates based on the candidates' ages. So there weren't big differences where younger, candidate, younger voters thought young candidates were much more competent. Everybody seemed to agree that younger candidates were a little bit less competent, much less experienced, more likely to focus on education, more likely to focus on childcare. So there was general agreement. So although we don't test it in this experiment, our, our guess um, is that perhaps it's because these voters are just valuing different attributes differently. So even though younger voters recognize that um, you know, candidates from their same age group don't have the same level of experience, and that could hinder them in certain ways in public office, they may be much more will willing to support their peers if they just value you know, attention paid to education and childcare, for example, more than voters from other age groups. The other thing we do in the paper is bring in actual mayoral elections um, from other parts of my dissertation and book project uh, to sort of test this. And so we look at how do younger candidates and middle-aged candidates and older candidates fare in actual elections? 
Um, and the, the short punchline is that it matches up quite well with the experimental findings. So younger candidates who actually run for mayor in Japan perform about as well as middle-aged candidates. Younger incumbents actually outperform middle-aged incumbents, but younger challengers and middle-aged challengers, which is closer to this experiment, you know, but they're both not incumbents, they perform about the same. Older candidates perform significantly worse. Now they don't lose by 50 percentage points on average. There's all sorts of other factors going into the actual election, but about th three to five percentage points less votes, uh, less of the vote share, sorry, three to five percentage points less of the voters share for candidates who are running um, over 70, whether they're incumbents or challengers. I think it was about two to four percentage points, maybe two percentage points for incumbents, four percentage points for challengers. So we do find some actual evidence to sort of back up that Japanese voters seem to dislike candidates past a certain age, and vote for younger candidates about the same as middle-aged candidates. This is just um, one part of a much broader project. Uh, sorry, so let me focus first on the broader contribution. So we think that the paper um, can contribute, contribute to our understandings of youth representation, because while other studies have found all sorts of su uh, support for supply side, institutional and ambition um, expectations or uh, influences on younger candidates running for office, we didn't really find um, strong barriers coming from the voter demand side. So our conclusion is that it seems like Japanese voters are perfectly willing, happy to see more young people running for office. So if institutions can be reformed and if young people can be encouraged to run, at least in this one study, we don't find that there are gonna be significant voter barriers um, to them being able to win the election. We also think that this talks to intergenerational inequality because voters agree that candidates of different ages are likely to focus on different issues. And so the absence of younger candidates in office means that voters are also expecting that the candidates they have, the mayors they have, to be much less likely to focus on issues important to young people like education and childcare. And then also offers, again, insights for our understandings of Japanese politics, um, thinking about uh, what are the sort of consequences, uh, both for, from the voter side, I mean, from the candidate side, of just, you know, Japan's sort of graying or silver democracy. So what I was about to say before was that this is part of a much broader project, both in the sense of my book project and a series of experiments that Yoshi and I are working on. And so I just wanna talk about next steps. And I'm very grateful um, if any of you have suggestions for sort of directions that we could go in other studies. So one thing you may have noticed is that we only used male candidate bases. Um, that was initially by design because I mean, it's sort of, it's unfortunate, but Japanese mayoral races, 98% uh, of candidates are men. So there's very few women running for office. And we chose to just focus on male faces in the beginning uh, because we just wanted to focus on, on age first and then look at sort of the age gender interaction. It turns out that when we started trying to work on manipulating female faces, the existing software we could find just didn't do a very good job uh, at manipulating female candidate faces. Again, I'm very happy to talk about the sort of technical side um, I'm sure we could get around this with more sophisticated tools, but the easier to use tools that we used, um, they tended to turn, uh, they had difficulties with Asian female faces, and they tended to make them look much like, more like, a, like white people as they got older. It just didn't look real at all. And in our, we do all sorts of, um, you know, uh, pretest type surveys, and can't, people, voters didn't believe that they were, they didn't look like very realistic. So we are struggling on that side. And so what we've been working on more recently is just using actual photos of real uh, male and female candidates. We don't manipulate them. Um, and I'm gonna show you some results in a minute. We just use actual photos and see if we find similar effects. And we're also gonna try and do some of these conjoint analyses, these text descriptions to sort of compare and contrast how you know, visual interpretations of a candidate's age versus textual descriptions of an age, how that differs and how candidates view candidates at different, or how voters, sorry, view candidates at different ages. So just to show you a quick thing from um, our real candidate photos, where we used uh, a, a large number of photos and randomly assigned um, people to view either a candidate who was in their 30s or a candidate who was in their 60s uh, and either male or female, we do find similar results with real candidate photos. Smaller effects, um, we're not using, we didn't use candidates in their late 70s. We used in you know, the sort of mid to late 60s, but we did find that uh, using older man as the baseline Japanese voters were much more likely to say that they would vote for the younger looking man, a younger looking woman. There weren't really huge gender differences. As you can see here, although younger man was preferred uh, over younger woman by a little bit, um, but older woman versus older man was about the same. And again, happy to talk with our work about our work uh, on real candidate photos.
lastly, um, this is, again is part of a broader book project that I'm working on. And it's you know, right in the middle of the book, thinking about sort of voter biases, both in holding back candidates and how it affects um, uh, or what voters expect about younger and older candidates and the types of policies they're likely to focus on in office. And as I mentioned in the beginning, the second part of the book really shows that these voter expectations are borne out. That they, that uh, for instance, Japanese candidates in surveys um, match these voter expectations. So if we look, for example, at surveys, even at the national level in the most recent election, um, which I've done, I find that younger candidates are much more likely to say in surveys that they're gonna focus on education and childcare than older candidates. And likewise, older candidates are much more likely to report that they think elderly care is the most important issue that they should be focusing on in office. It's borne out in surveys, and it's also borne out at the mayor's office in actual spending. So as I mentioned again at the, at the beginning, my other uh, part of this that I've been working on is showing that if a Japanese, if a young person does get elected mayor in Japan, controlling for all sorts of other factors about the time period, about the municipality, um, about other candidates running, I find that they're much more likely to increase actual spending. They spend significantly more, uh, especially toward the long term, they invest in building more daycare centers, they invest in you know, tackling taikijido. So there does seem to be um, a match between sort of what voters expect the candidates will do and what the candidates say they will do and what they actually do in office. So I'll stop here um, a bit early, but happy to talk again during the Q&A. Um, and thank you so much. And then here, you know, is, is myself and I, my co-author, Yoshi. So thank you for, so much for listening. Look forward to all your comments. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for an amazing talk. And uh, I personally look forward to seeing you becoming older and <laughs> you, will, you will actually look like those voters. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, uh, we already have a few questions in the Q&A. So let me uh, begin with uh, one of those. And, and maybe I, I, will, I will piggyback on that question sure. with, my, with my question as well. So the first question is from Nuan Nuan Xian. Uh, does, so uh, it, it reads, does within party politics result in age bias? For example, less resources were given to young politicians. And if yes, voters evaluation versus within party politics, which one is more influential? So I, I you know, so I actually had like a kind of a similar um, question when you know you talked about your your experiment because your experiment is focused your experiment focuses on like a newcomers right so you explicitly frame those candidates as newcomers not incumbents and you know if that's the case like maybe you know older candidates are like you know very disadvantageous because like why this guy is this old like running as a newcomer um and you know and and and, and then then on on top on top of that like you know younger folks are less likely to be re-elected uh, for public offices if if they have fewer resources because they are young and so i'm wondering what you know what would what would you think about those points? Yeah, I kind of go ahead and respond to those questions to begin. Um, so thank you so much, um, Yuki and Nen and for your comments. Uh, so yeah, I mean, in this particular um, project, right, focusing on mayors, there's not really um, strong party differences because most of them are sort of running as independents. We don't have enough leverage to um, to sort of test what you're asking, Nen. But just anecdotally, um, I will say that this resource challenge for younger politicians at the national level within party politics um, is also a reason why younger politicians in Japan tend to be much more likely, successful younger politicians tend to be much more likely to be second or third generation politicians, right? So within the LDP, it's not necessarily that they, um, you know, have no, uh, or historically have had no young candidates, but a large number of them who are entering office before 40 uh, tend to be part of these political dynasties. Um, and that's one way that they can overcome the typical like resource challenge to younger candidates is to sort of inherit these um, resources from older politicians. Uh, but I will also say that, um, you know, interestingly, the LDP as a whole, though, uh, 
is the is one of the oldest or like the oldest of sort of the major parties in Japan. Um, and so in this last election, and I mentioned that there were sort of fewer young candidates in the last, um, the, few, the lowest number of young candidates in the last 30 years, the LDP had particularly few young candidates. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's an interesting question to sort of study in the future. Uh, Yuki, to your point about older candidates being very disadvantaged, um, and in this particular case, so I think that you are picking up on one reason why we might be finding a larger effect than other studies. Uh, but I will say that those conjoint experiments, again, that control for whether the candidate is an incumbent or not, still find this strong elderly bias. So I think ours may be larger because perhaps voters um, may be additionally discriminatory sort of someone who's not only elderly, but running for office for the first time and being elderly. Uh, but I'm just saying that the effect doesn't seem to disappear um, either in other conjoint experiments or in you know, uh, my using actual mayoral election data, they still suffer even if they are the incumbent. So I do think that our effects are sort of larger than that because of that effect, um, but the effect doesn't go away altogether. So hopefully that at least gets at the sort of core of your question. Yuki, I think you're muted if you're talking. Excuse me, thank you, thank you very much. Um, so let me go to the next question, which is from Alison Alexi. Uh, thank you very much for your fascinating presentation. Uh, you described dynamics that have such high stakes. Uh, I found myself thinking a lot about the older politician who was put in charge of cybersecurity, but then it turned out he had never used email. Um, this was such an obvious and absurd situation, but I truly couldn't tell if people were just laughing at it or really irritated. Um, so my, my question is, what's your sense of how voters react when there are obvious examples of age-related problems, uh, like i.e. older politicians acting their age in? clueless ways. Yeah, that is, um, that's fascinating. And it actually is, I don't, I don't have like, again, sort of data to back this up, but it's something that Yoshi and I have talked about doing, which is we wanted to do these uh, experiments with candidate manifestos, where we have, where we sort of vary the age of the candidate and the policy stance that they're taking. And so what we wanted to vary was actually exactly what you're talking about, Allison, which is how do voters react when they see an older candidate who's like really focusing on, on youth issues or something like that, or really focusing on technology, on youth policy, this sort of, do they see a sort of disconnect and how do they view that, um, you know, like when the sort of age doesn't match that. Uh, anecdotally talking to people, I mean, I think that um, it does seem, it certainly seems to turn off <laughs> younger people um, that I've spoken to in terms of just sort of seeing it as another example of, you know, traditional politics being out of touch with the interests of sort of younger generations and it's just sort of being laughed off, but there's sort of being some hint of truth in that laughter. So sorry, I don't have like a better um, example to sort of get at what you're saying, but I, I really like the question and I think it'd be a great thing to study uh, to see how voters react with some sort of like not cognitive dissonance, but dissonance between the age of the candidate and what they um, what they pretend to be experts on, for example. Okay, thank you. Um, so there are two questions, I believe, from uh, Shinobu Kitayama. Um, and let me read out the first question and, uh, uh, and let you answer that, Charlie. Sure. It is, so the first one reads, uh, it is possible that young people uh, who prefer uh, younger candidates don't show up to vote, which explains why younger candidates are not elected. This possibility would gain credibility with evidence directly linking the age difference in the show up rate to the outcome of election. Is there any such evidence? Yeah, I mean, you're really coming up um, and I appreciate all these great comments with a laundry list of things that I would like to do. Um, unfortunately, it's very difficult in, at least in the Japan case, to get age breakdowns of turnout by municipality. Um, so I know some people who have 
I've worked on it and it has involved basically directly emailing um, municipal offices for that information. Because although national trends are reported, uh, they don't really break it down the actual data. So not a great way to test it. Um, what I will say is that not in Japan, but in other contexts, uh, people have tested the opposite question, which is sort of that when presented with a in an experiment or or in with real data, when there are younger candidates um, on the ballot, youth turnout seems to go up. So it's sort of the other direction, the other arrow, which seems to be that when there when young people run for office, young younger voters are more likely to turn out. Um, so, but I'd love to be able to test if if the opposite effect is true as well, which is to see if when youth turnout is higher those younger candidates. Um, I mean, it is a bit endogenous because of the reason I just said, but trying to um, isolate the effect of youth turnout on the success of younger candidates. Um, though, like I said, I mean, even though they're not getting the boost right now of higher youth turnout, those young people who do run for mayor uh, perform pretty well. Thanks. Okay, so the second question from him reads, uh, uh, it appears that if perceived electability drives voting decisions, one can begin to understand why older candidates tend to win over their uh, younger counterparts, even though the older ones are disliked. But this finding seems to bring the question one step back without solving it, unless one can specify factors determining the perceived electability. So I wonder if you might have any thoughts on this matter. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, sorry, it's, it's sort of tangential, but, but related. Uh, the thing that we had thought about was that maybe younger candidates would get a boost in um, electability or perceived electability because younger candidates would be viewed as more physically attractive. Physically attractive candidates are thought to be uh, more likely to win elections. Uh, but we found that while well, it's true that these younger faces that we used um, are, and then the actual candidate photos as well, uh, are thought to be more attractive, we still find very similar results if we sort of control for um, perceived attractiveness. So again, I, I know this is not getting at exactly your point, um, but I think it, we do have to, I do, I mean, I think in our particular one, it would require sort of additional testing to see if, um, you know, we talked about, we, we asked one set, one group of vote or one group of respondents about whether they would vote or not and a separate group about perceived electability. Um, but it would be great to sort of ask additional questions to see like if that those perceptions about electability might decrease their chance of turning out. So maybe young people, you know, would, would vote for younger candidates, but they don't think the younger candidate's going to win. So it's not even that they change their vote, but they just don't turn out in the first place. Um, so we need to sort of, you know, test additional things to sort of further draw out this chain. This is just very sort of suggestive first steps um, at a possible relationship. But thanks for the question. Great, thanks. Uh, so uh, right, right for now, there, there aren't uh, questions in the queue. And so let, uh, while, while waiting, other people are going to post questions. Let me ask several questions. I actually have a bunch of questions. Yeah, sure. I think. And so, um, you know, I, I'd like to ask, uh, I, I'd like to ask them one by one. So the first one is, uh, you know, you showed, you showed young candidates or like, you know, equally like seen as equally advantageous as as, as middle-aged candidates. But but doesn't that mean that like middle-aged candidates are far more advantageous on like because of the other dimensions in the real in the real world elections? Yeah. So I think that um, you know we we should do, I'm hoping to do uh, the sort of again conjoints at the mayoral level to see it or other types of experiments at the mayor's level to see if adding other types of characteristics, um, you know, controlling for those characteristics still finds a similar effect. But even if you did that, I think there's an additional point that you're, that you're making, right? Which is that um, they're just seeing their photos, right? So the, the voter is passing the train station and sees the candidate poster or sees the person making a stump speech and forms this initial impression and thinks, okay, I would be just as likely, you know, based on just having seen this candidate, I would be just as likely to vote for the younger candidate as the middle-aged candidate. But then once we bring in all the factors that are correlated with age, like the middle-aged candidate having significant more name recognition or financial resources, they may still be more likely to win. So here we're really just sort of, again, focusing on 
Uh, just age absent of all the things that tend to be correlated with age, but younger candidates could still be um, suffering. Our thing was just more that they don't seem to be suffering because of perceptions of their age absent of other information. So they could still be suffering overall, um, although we don't find it in actual elections, uh, but they could be because of these, you know, um, other factors that are correlated with age. Hey, um, the, so another, another question from me is actually on like a st policy stereotype experiment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wondered, you know, I, I wondered if like whether whether sort of voters implicitly kind of uh, assumed some kind of partisanship of young and older candidates because you know usually like in in Japan at least in, in, you know LDPs LDP tend to have older politicians whereas you know the other parties may tend may have like young may have more young young uh younger candidates and so i wondered you know did you control for that or you just you just like give them like a random uh randomly uh to randomly told them the, the age of the candidates so um in this one right we didn't uh we only controlled by saying that they ran as independents right so we didn't uh tell the voters i mean you know some even though most mayors in Japan run as independents, they can still, um, you know, they might be coming from the municipal assembly. So they previously had a partisan affiliation. They may receive support during the election from certain parties. Uh, interestingly, in mayoral elections in Japan, even like opposing parties at the national level can support the same candidate at the municipal level. And so it's not uncommon to, for them to be receiving support from, from many parties. Uh, so in the specific experiment, we couldn't, we didn't control for it. We just told voters, you know, as as most as in most elections, these candidates are running as independent. So we didn't ask them um, if they inferred any specific information. Although that would be interesting to see if they would infer, for example, that the younger candidate was, you know, more likely to be from an opposition party or more likely to have opposition ties. Uh, but in the, and I can only say that in the actual data, um, we could control for at least. Um, whether parties made sort of like overt signs, like detectable signs of support. Uh, so it didn't control for like the candidates like background before they became mayor, but during the election, did the candidate receive some sort of support from major parties? And, and there didn't, fi didn't find that it, you know, washed away the effects, but I like your idea. I'm wondering if, um, how much voters might be inferring, like, you know, we didn't test that, but inferring partisan ties or, uh, another possibility would be interesting to test is how much they infer um, ties to the central government, for example, or ties to, to Tokyo, because I think there's at least a popular narrative uh, in Japan that younger candidates are more likely to go to, say, national bureaucracies, go to Zaimisho, like the Ministry of Finance, um, and then return home and run for office. And so it, it's another like fascinating you know, angle to test is maybe the voter is thinking, like, oh, this candidate's got these, these ties to Tokyo, they're going to be much better or worse, I don't know, uh, at, you know, bring, bringing money to the municipality, <laughs> right? Um, the, the, the converse could be true as well, right? Which is that you infer an older candidate that, that what that experiment experience really means is having to do with, you know, again, ability to sort of raise the overall welfare or, or raise the welfare of particular groups. So lots of other questions we could have asked um, or could ask in future experiments that I think would be really interesting. But here we just sort of focused on very general, like, um, you know, issue attention, uh, traits and overall electability. But I, I would like to test, you know, yeah, center local and partisan would be great. Hey, um, thanks. Uh, I still have a few questions, but uh, you know, uh, we got we got a question in the queue. So let me let me ask that question uh, first. Uh, it's from Sheila Smith. Uh, great talk, Charlie. I was struck by your study's results regarding the surprising lack of bias on age of candidates and the actual demographic data on Japan's mayors. Uh, it prompted me to consider the reasons older candidates are elected to mayoral positions. I thought it may have uh, something to do with the structure of governance in Japan. Local municipalities need funding from the central government, and many mayors are act 
uh, actual uh, retired bureaucrats um, who have networks they can mobilize for their uh, for their town and city as a mayor. So that's the point you just raised, right? Um, in addition to campaign platform, I wonder if it might be useful to look at the uh, biographies of current mayors and see what back, uh, backgrounds they have and see whether national government and or industry background may factor into their attractiveness. Also, you may want to look at uh, contrast with governors in addition to mayors. Mm. So thank you so much, um, Sheila, for attending my talk and for uh, these great comments. Um, and not in this paper, but in other parts of the book project, I've tried to collect basically as much you know, demographic and background information on mayors in Japan as possible. Uh, and so you're right, uh, absolutely. And, and one thing that's very distinct that I sort of touched on was that um, sort of like the typical pathways that candidates of different ages take to the mayor's office. So among older mayors, for example, uh, many they're more likely to have come through the municipal government, right? So maybe they actually haven't really been a politician much before, but they were a bureaucrat within the same municipality for 40 years. And then now they're 60 and so they run for office. And so they not only might have, um, you were talking about ties to the central government, but they might also have sort of experience in the local bureaucracy. Whereas, as I mentioned earlier, um, I found that younger candidates thus far uh, are more likely to have experience in the national bureaucracy, but it would be interesting, you're, you're talking about, um, I guess, older candidates, if they do, if they are retired from the national bureaucracy, they probably have a lot of experience. The younger candidates I'm looking at, you know, they left the bureaucracy at a fairly early age, right? So they, they did spend five years or seven years or 10 years in the bureaucracy, but they didn't have sort of a, a lifelong career. Um, and then I like the idea a lot of looking at um, younger governors, uh, because that is one position that also, like one thing that I found that's interesting is that younger candidates in, who run for mayor in Japan, um, they often have their eyes on the governorship as opposed to say running for the lower house and talking to mayors, uh, a lot of them aren't particularly interested in sort of giving up those executive powers that I've talked about, right? The sort of running their municipality to, you know, what becoming a backbencher and sort of what it means to go through the diet. They, perhaps they have aspirations to be prime minister someday, but it's going to be a very long path for them to get some sort of influence on policy. And so I often find that they are, their views are like they're, you know, looking toward the future is staying in their current office as long as possible, but also looking toward governorship. And we've seen several um, younger governors in Japan who were previously mayors um, and who are very influential, uh, including um, in recent sort of COVID related policy. So thank you so much for the suggestions. They're great ideas um, to look at in the future. Great, thanks, Jelly. Um, so uh, now, uh, now we exhausted questions in the queue again. So uh, uh, let, me, let me move back to my questions. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so, so related to my previous question, so the, the, uh, the voters, voters sort of policy or trade stereotypes about young and old candidates, are they real or are they just stereotypes? Or do you have any, do you have any sort of evidence on, on that? Yeah, uh, so I am I'm working on now and with Yoshi on doing um, surveys of sort of local politicians that are in line with the great surveys done by sort of like Asahi Todai uh, elite surveys, right, um, at the national level. So I don't have the surveys um, back yet to, to look at survey responses, but at the national level, um, it matches up quite well. The voter expectations match up quite well with what lower house candidates, for example, say um, are the most are the issues they view as most important to, for the government to tackle. So I looked, um, I was writing a chapter uh, for this upcoming book um, by Pe you know, Rob Pekinen and Dan Smith and Steve Reed about younger politicians in this 2021 um, lower house election. And younger candidates in the most recent national election were much more likely to say, you know, when asked, what do you think the government's priorities should be? Uh, much more likely to list education, childcare, significantly more likely to take um, environmental stances. And one thing that we didn't ask about in the survey that came up was younger candidates were also much more likely to uh, be take more liberal stances on gender equality. So they're more positive toward women being able to keep their surnames after getting married and much more positive on LGBT uh, issues as well. 
So, and then the flip side too uh, was that we found that older candidates, or I found that older candidates are, as this suspects, most much more likely to list elderly care or healthcare. So that, that's like the closest matchup that I can think of is that the voters, what the voters expect is what the candidates say, at least at the national level that they will focus on. Um, and then I'm trying to look at sort of more actual policy outcomes. And there I've really just focused on sort of childcare and elderly care. And it, it matches up to a certain extent with actual spending, which is that in the mayor's offices, I do find that younger mayors, you know, increase the spending on child welfare if they're elected. But an interesting thing has been that they, although the voters expect the young candidate to focus much less on elderly care, it, perhaps that happens, but they don't take funds away from the elderly, right? So they do focus more on child care, they do increase spending on child care, but they don't decrease spending on elderly care. So again, I'm not sure how to match up sort of issue focus with the actual outcome, but that's sort of the evidence I've collected thus far uh, and trying to sort of you know, build more to see if these expectations or where these expectations are borne out um, and where they're not. Great, thanks. So um, because you talked about the policy outcomes, I, yeah. I, I'd, like, I'd like to uh, this next question, which is, you know, um, does policy really matter, right? So, you know, you you mentioned you mentioned uh, you know Ishima and other people's paper um, yeah. uh, quite quite several quite a few times, and and their their title itself is party competition without policy, right? So, or without the policy competition or something like that. And so I wonder, you know, like voters voters may view young and old candidates in a different way and maybe maybe voters attach different kinds of policies with with you know old and young candidates um in like when they vote um, yeah like does it does it matter i mean yeah. it, it, this 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 question might be like kind of a uh, you know like a very pessimistic question uh in, in terms of in terms of the quality of democracy, but you know, uh, as as a political scientist, I think uh, this question must be must be asked. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have two thoughts about that. Uh, so one would be, I'd be very curious if you know Yusaku and others have plans to try and do it at the local level to see you know where uh, party ID is much less prevalent and you can't just sort of you know vote for your because the candidates are not running sort of under the, the label and sort of the same way. If you still find this, you know, not caring about policy stances and what, what exactly is driving voter behavior in local elections. So that'd be really interesting if they could try and replicate and see if it's there. And the other thought I have, um, yeah, this, it is sort of uh, disheartening to, to see those kinds of results. Um, but I don't, you know, we are only testing particular things in this, in this uh, study, but I, I wonder if, you know, um, it might be emblematic or, or symbolic of all sorts of other expectations that younger voters say have toward younger candidates. So here we're showing, you know, younger voters more likely to support younger candidates, um, and you know, they uh, they think they're more likely to focus on issues. And maybe maybe there's other parts of the study that are, you know, that can be shown that will be like that uh, will also be very consequential. Which is to say, maybe for example, they'll participate much more in elections because they expect their policies to be, you know. Uh, focused on more, or maybe it relates to their general interest in politics or likelihood of running for office in the future. So even if the um, the policy like con congruence between voters and candidates isn't exactly what is the main driving factor, maybe we have to keep testing to see like what is it about it, that, you know, if there are sort of more positive outcomes. So sorry, I don't have a great answer to that. It's, it's an interesting question. It's a <laughs> sort of a downer, but, <laughs> yeah. but I, I, you know, I do think it's important. And at the local level, I mean, again, I said this earlier, so I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but um, at the national level, you know, I think the expectations for what you expect the diet member to do are very different. You do expect them to bring certain goods back and, and do certain things for the constituency. Do you expect a younger first time lawmaker to um, pass a new child welfare legislation in Japan? You know, at the national level, that, that seems kind of unrealistic. But at the local level, your expectations about the mayor's ability to increase concrete, you know, um, yen or do dollars, right? Money spent on, it seems like a more concrete expectation. So that's why I'd like to see um, if this same, you know, lack of policy interest takes place at sort of local level politics as well. 
Thanks. Uh, so, final question. Yeah. Uh, so, I think the central message of your paper is that among voters, there is not, um, you know, bias against young candidates, right? Uh, so then, going back to the, you know, the, the first, basically, maybe first or second slide you, you just showed in your talk. Is, does that does that mean that like we we don't we don't have young politicians mostly because of the demands uh, mostly because of the supply side? Yeah, so uh, we're testing the demand side, so it's hard to be um, you know a hundred percent sure. For, for, I mean, it's hard to be. Uh, we don't test the supply side in this particular paper, although I do in other parts of the book, um, and find like other studies have found the supply side seems quite consequential. Um, in terms of political institutions and ambition, in terms of driving sort of who runs for office and how many young people run for office. So I do think it is sort of one of the at least suggested implications of the study. And the thing that we say is that at least within the extant evidence or the existing evidence that exists, it seems like, you know, for policymakers who are interested in increasing youth representation, that these issues can best be tackled by addressing sort of the supply side. Um, and so before, uh, actually, the, the, the diet had sort of, um, there's a you know, group of younger policymakers in the diet who were coming up with ways before the pandemic hit to try and increase the number of young people who ran for office in Japan. And the, the two policies that they came up with were both very supply side focused, uh, basically eliminating the minimum candidate deposit system to make it less expensive to run for a national office, because right now, um, you know, vote, candidates have to put up a significant amount of money that they might lose if they don't receive a certain amount of the vote. Um, and the other thing they wanted to do was reduce the age of candidacy to basically 18, to be the same age as voting, whereas right now it's 25 for the lower house and for mayors, and it's 30 for the upper house. Um, so I think that, you know, right now that seems to be that that either uh, removing barriers or getting other types of ways of getting young people interested in politics and seeing politics as a realm where they can operate and have influence over policy. That seems to be the most influential way. And I think what we were trying to contribute to this is that at least what we see, we don't see a lot of evidence that voters are going to stand in the way, right? That there's some sort of view that people in their 30s can't be effective representatives. Um, you know, it'd be interesting to test 18 year olds, right? Our study was much more about Japan doesn't have any like 30 year olds and very few 40 year olds, <laughs> right? In mm -hmm. their but we didn't test about an 18 year old mayor, right? So there, there could be like a you know, some bar on the lower side. We were just focused on, you know, even even people uh, our age uh, are you know just so underrepresented. So few people like age of you know people who have um, uh, tend to have younger children and you know benefiting from the most from child welfare. So underrepresented in office, uh, but we didn't see any you know voter obstacles. But it would be interesting, yeah, to see other research looking more at how effective can sort of supply side reforms be. Because uh, the last thing I'll say is that. You know, they've tried some supply side <laughs> reforms uh, on the gender side, for example, and it, it isn't always enough to just like remove barriers, right? There's all sorts of other factors. So it will be, it'll be interesting to see what the best path forward is. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, and I think it's about time. So, um, you know, I would like to ask the audience to uh, join me thanking uh, Charlie for a great talk and uh, thank you very much and uh, you know, have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much to everyone who came and to CJS for hosting me. <laughs>